Oh my god. Guys, for the past days, I've been doing nothing but playing Bowser's Fury. It is some of the most fun I've had with the Mario game since Mario Odyssey. And believe it or not, that was over 3 years ago. It's Mario Odyssey's creativeness meshed with the epic mechanics of 3D World. It really shows how much time and care Nintendo can put into a project if they really wanted to. It really does make me wish that the base Mario 3D World game was just like this. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the base game, but in my opinion, it doesn't hold a candle to Bowser's Fury. And it's not like I don't like linear games, in fact, Mario Galaxy is one of my most favorite games of all time. It's just the base Mario 3D World game is missing some sort of central theme. You see, in the base Mario 3D World game, the central theme seems to be cats, but the theme was never fully incorporated throughout the whole game. But I can safely say that Bowser's Fury more than makes up for that. Every enemy has feline aspects, and the massive Bowser is also a strong theme that is seen throughout the game. It makes you feel like you're going up against a Godzilla version of Bowser. Goku Mario vs Godzilla Bowser is 10 times better than King Kong vs Godzilla. There are a total of 100 cat shine sprites in Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And of course, that wouldn't be good if the objectives weren't creative, but Bowser's Fury excels at this. This truly went over my expectations of what was capable with the Mario 3D World format. For me personally, it took about 7 or 8 hours to 100% beat the side game, but I really think that having a lot of fun during those hours is what really makes it worth it. The enemies' designs are so simplistic, yet that is what makes them so cool. I gotta say, my favorite so far is the flying character. It's just so funny to look at. I'm surprised that these simple design changes weren't incorporated in the base Mario 3D World game. This really shows how at the time, in the Wii U era, the company was putting these silly limitations on themselves, but now they have the freedom to do anything they want. I can really appreciate how they fixed the item usage dilemma. I felt that only having one slot would be a problem, but the solution was having up to 5 power-ups for each power-up slot. This way you can store multiple of different kinds. I do feel that they should nerf it to just 3 to make it a little harder, but it's fine for what it is. There was one or two times where I didn't have any cat power-ups, so I had to switch over to Tanuki or Fireball Mario, which really says something. Sure, you probably will never run out of power-ups, but sometimes you will have to choose which ones you want to use so you can save the rest for later. This is especially apparent when Fury Bowser shows up. Sometimes it's hard to avoid, so you have to choose which power-ups you want to burn through until you collect a shine or wait for Bowser to leave. Speaking of dying, it actually hurts when you die in this game for two reasons that I find very genius. The first one is that they take away half of your coins, which if you get a hundred of them, you can get a random power-up. We've seen this penalty variation in Mario Odyssey where you lose 10 coins and while that was a reason enough not to die, it wasn't much of a problem considering you probably had an abundance of coins anyways. But here, taking away half your coins means you're going to have to find a lot more coins to get a power up. Thankfully this time we've also seen the coins were spread out and there aren't as many as there used to be which makes them feel useful without feeling overpowered. The second penalty for dying is that it puts you back at the beginning of the area that you were. Since many of the individual areas have you climbing towards the top, this is yet another genius penalty where it makes you not want to die. The base Mario 3D World game was arguably easy, but here I find some of the areas were decently challenging. Nothing like Dark Souls, but still I felt like gamers were the target audience and not just little kids. Nintendo games have always been very polished products. No matter what Mario game you're playing, you're guaranteed to have at least a little fun. There was only one glitch I experienced throughout the entire Bowser's Fury section, and to be honest, I just thought it was really cool and interesting. Unlike a game like Cyberpunk where there's a glitch every few seconds, every time you get onto a car in Cyberpunk, there's bound to be a glitch. Speaking of, I must say, Traversal in this game is the most fun I've had in a Mario game. You get to ride Plessy, which is really exhilarating. 
the music kicks in and you go super fast and makes you think, yeah, I guess I really am finally playing Bowser's Fury. I can really appreciate the speed that Plessy is capable of. It makes going from one area to the next area very fun. Once you collect 50 shine sprites and beat the game for the first time, Bowser Jr. allows you to fast travel, which is a really simple yet good idea to unlock fast travel after beating half the game. And after beating the game with 100 shine sprites, both Mario and Bowser Jr. have both been transformed. Mario being Goku Mario and Bowser Jr. being converted to Cat Bowser Jr., which is a really nice touch. Overall, I really truly do think Bowser Fury was an amazing above and beyond addition to Mario 3D World. The mechanics in this side game were used in unique and creative ways. Nintendo really has come a long way in terms of good game design. Bowser's Fury is the product of refining the unique style of game that Nintendo has brought to us over the years. Basically what I'm trying to say is that yeah, Bowser's Fury is good and you should buy it. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you later.